Hello, Robert Bastian here, uh, Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute. A little comment about voice use after vocal cord microsurgery, and I'm thinking here primarily of uh, vibratory injuries, the vocal overdoers. So we're talking about nodules and polyps primarily, um, and with a comment about singers because and performers. Um, so uh, people want to know why do you rest the voice for four days rather than two weeks or a month or whatever? Well, the reason is that after vocal cord microsurgery, there is a period of what I call surgical laryngitis. There's viral laryngitis, bacterial laryngitis. Well, there's a laryngitis from the, the manipulation of surgery. And in my experience, it's, it's most evident for about four days it can vary between people. So that's why I say try not to use the voice at all for about four days. If you forget and say a word or two, it's not a big deal. Uh, if we could really count on your using the voice just for 20 words, we would do that. But it's much easier for most people just to say, I'm not talking. So uh, that's why we resume voice use on post-operative day four. Um, but we use a seven-point scale of talkativeness or to amount of voice use. And so I tell people week one, that's beginning four days after the surgery, begins week one of voice use. Uh, so week one, we're using the voice as a two on our seven-point scale. Week two, we're using, we're at a three on a seven-point scale. Week three, we're at a four on a seven-point scale and so forth. Um, so there are two ways that people do this. There are people who have a background in theater or whatever, and they'll say, well, I have a friend who's a two. I'm a, naturally a six or a seven, uh, but I have a friend who's a two, and I will play their role. So I can kind of respond to life as they do. Uh, I can kind of play that role. Other people say, mm, I don't have a dimmer switch. I don't have a rheostat or a dimmer switch. I'm either on or I'm off. And so those people will alternate uh, periods of silence with periods of voice use. So for example, as a two, they might say, I'll talk for five minutes and then be quiet for 30 minutes and then talk for five minutes and be quiet for 30 minutes, that kind of a thing. Um, now a word about the singing voice. Uh, a lot of people who have vocal cord microsurgery are singers because they are the ones who are most affected by nodules and polyps and have the most to gain. And so what I usually tell them is also beginning on post-operative day four, uh, they begin singing, vocalizing as a uh, uh, five minutes twice a day, but that vocalizing is very gentle. It's what I call Ellie Omeling. It's, it's, it's art songs. It's, it's uh, very clean, clear, compact, uh, sort of mezzo piano kind of voice. It's not operatic yet. Um, so they do five minutes twice a day. The th a week two, meaning uh, so, uh, voice rest for four days, then week one begins. So week two begins a week after the beginning of voice use. They uh, vocalize for 10 minutes twice a day and so forth. And a lot of uh, people think, it's kind of understandable, but they kind of think, well, if I'm have just had surgery, I should stay away from my high voice. And my answer to that is no, you uh, at attempt to use the entire range of the voice, uh, and it's what I call gentle insistence. So you're singing quietly, compactly, real singing, and if the voice hesitates, it doesn't want to speak, you kind of lean into it a little bit. You don't jam into it, but you just kind of coax it. Uh, all the way through the entire expected range, but you accept it if it doesn't want to come out, especially in the first week or two, your upper voice may not have recovered fully, but you still kind of check it out and coax it and see what happens. So that is my typical uh, post-operative voice use suggestion uh, for nodules and polyps, a uh, little different uh, suggestions for other kinds of conditions, and I'll make a little video about that um, in a different, at a different time. Thanks for listening and hope it helps.